Today, we are taking a look at the Bitter Root Omnibus Hardcover Book One. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and today we've got yet another omnibus overview here brought to you by the good folks over at Organic Price Books, the best place to look for collected editions. If you're looking for books like this, or maybe you're trying to catch up on your X-Men Omnibus collection or your Batman, they've got all of it in stock, pre-orders, back orders. Just go to OrganicPriceBooks.com. Use my coupon code BJKicks at checkout. It'll save you $2 on every order. Or if you know you're the big spender in the family like me, then go ahead and place your order of three books or more and use the coupon code BJKicks to ship it together. You'll save 5%. That 5% really comes in handy. So go ahead, check out OPB. Thanks to OPB for sponsoring this video. I am super excited to give you guys a look inside Bitterroot. This is one of my favorite things that I've read since I started reading comics, like just period. So very excited to get into this. Written by David F. Walker and Chuck Brown with art by Sanford Green. This book is a treat. So without further ado, let's get into that overview. All right, so today we are taking a look at the Bitter Root Omnibus Book One Hardcover, written by David Walker and Chuck Brown, with art by Sanford Green. One of my favorite things that I've read since I started reading comics about four years ago. This is a cover image by Sanford Green, the series artist. Before we get a look inside, let's take a look at the spine. This is not like a connecting spot or anything like that, but you got this nice spot gloss with the uh, Bitter Root logo there. And let's talk about the back. It says, for generations, the Sangrier family has fought to protect the world from the evil plague of the Jinnu, hideous creatures born out of hate and racism. But now the family was faced an even greater evil that has arisen to destroy humanity and threatens to rip the family apart. So with that context, this uh, is uh, it has a cover price of $59.99. You can get that a lot lower, of course, at Organic Price Books. Link in the description. Uh, this collects issues 1 through 15 of Bitterroot, which is the full series, um, and then the R Bitterroot Red Summer special. And it is rated M for Mature, mostly because of, like, you know, the monster and sort of scary imagery. So, speaking of scary imagery, right here we've got a whole bunch of Jinnu, which we'll learn more about here in a bit. Uh, so, opening this up to the title page, of course... Bitterroot Omnibus Book 1. And so we've got our series credits. It's written by David Walker, Chuck Brown, and uh, the arts by Sanford Green. But the three of them together created the series. And then um, color artists Rico Renzi and Sa Sanford Green, Sophie Dodson. And uh, so very cool stuff. I'm not going to read everybody's name out. Um, but then you've got your table of contents. And basically, We've got the actual story, like the issues, but then we've also got something called Bitter Truths uh, that you'll read along through, um, and we'll talk about it as we get into it. But nice uh, chapter layout. There's even an afterword by Dennis Cowan, friend of the channel. Um, and here we go. Got our introduction by Jason Johnson, who is a professor of politics and journalism at Morgan State University. And he also has a PhD from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, go Tar Heels. Uh, anyway, we'll move this light around a little bit so we're not getting so much glare off the pages. There we go. And here we go. We start off with a family tree of the Sanger Yays, and then we will go ahead and get started. So I'm going to talk to you guys about what this series is about. So this series is about a family of monster hunters that is set during the Harlem Renaissance period in American history. So, you know, 1920s, early to mid 1920s. And basically what is going on is that there are these monsters and we're finding these monsters all over the place. And the monsters are called Jinnu. And the Sangerier family is just like at a decades or centuries long tradition of curing Jinnu. Um, what I love about this book is that it combines a lot of different elements of like kind of straight up African American folklore and um, 
just sort of uh, family heirlooms. I don't know how you describe like just black culture and how black culture, especially black culture in the South has been passed down from generation to generation. But anyway, we've got this family um, who is known for curing the Jinu. And so basically helping them to not be infected and go back to being regular citizens. Now, the Jinu are citizens or, you know, people who have been infected by the seeds of hate or hatred, right? And so generally that hate takes form of racism. And so the more that you let the anger and hatred associated with racism consume you, the more you devolve and devolve until you eventually become this sort of monster here. And that's where this family comes in. So there are some of them who fight the Jinu and some of them or and the women who generally or traditionally would be the ones like actually mixing up the herbs, doing the root work uh, to create the cure for these people to go in and then subdue these beasts. Well, as we open up this book in the middle of Harlem, we are learning that there are more and more monster sightings in Harlem where, you know, we've been sort of seeing these monsters like um, in other areas, like in the South, like, you know, from Reconstruction era and where the Klan is active and stuff like that. Um, and so the series takes place both in Harlem and in Mississippi. And in the Sangria family, uh, they've been doing this monster hunting thing for a minute. And so there are some of them who have the feeling that, hey, this racism, these Jinu can be cured. And there are others of them that are like, nah, we just need to eradicate them. Like, let's just, let's just, you know, put them out of their misery. Let's kill them. There's no saving these people. And uh, that's kind of the two factions at work. And then there's sort of a third, there's sort of a third uh, that kind of gets introduced throughout these pages. And I'll let you find out what that third uh, sort of faction or uprising of discourse is. Um, but anyway, so as we're going through the book, you can see like there's different art, different styles in here. I think right now we're looking at the Red Hook or Red Summer special. But, um, and while I'm going through and kind of showing you the artwork without spoiling the story, I'll tell you what I like about this. Uh, so this book is very much like a sort of steampunk book um and you've got like you know sort of classic monster hunting uh monsters that look different from any monsters you've seen before and it's a book that is just very much visually interesting the character work is great the sort of conflicts that you have even among family members are great and this would be a great book if it was just a monster hunting book right but then you add this layer of the sort of meta commentary about you know, what does it mean to let hatred consume you? What does it mean to be victimized? What does it mean? Um, you know, how do those things affect you? How do these things live in our psyche? And how do they sort of present themselves as they continue to impact us on a daily basis? So all of that is a part of this series. And then, and then this book is like so black, right? And it's funny because it's like this is a book that's not made necessarily just for black people. Like, absolutely not. It's a great book that anyone can enjoy. But why it resonated with me so much is, you know, I'm a black kid from the South with roots in the North as well. Right. Like my grandmother grew up on a tobacco farm in North Carolina, moved to New York, went to an Ivy League school, raised her kids in New York. And now we're back in the South. But anyway. So there's there's cultural aspects of this book that are just like amazing. Like you wouldn't necessarily recognize them as cultural if you weren't of that culture. But the whole idea of root work and mixing in herbs and, uh, you know, natural cures and holistic cures for diseases known and unknown. That's just like been a thing since Africa. Right. And it's been passed down through generations. That's in this book. There are like countless references to different aspects of black culture with these variant covers. This is a Sean Martin bro cover that is a clear homage to New Jack City, for example. Um, and there's like little things like that where it's just like, if you know, you know. 
Um, but even if you don't know, look at this. Like these pages are amazing. No matter like what is going on, no matter who you are reading it. But then on top of all of that, for those who may be like not, here's another one. This is an homage to Juice, one of my favorite movies. But even if you are like uninitiated, then you've got these essays, uh, you know, organized into sections called Bitter Truths. You've got these essays from different African-American studies, professors, scholars, uh, teachers, authors, and they are connecting the themes that you see in this book with like other themes throughout like the history of black life in America, the African diaspora, uh, black art. We've got one about Bitterroot and the black speculative legacy of Zora Neale Hurston, right? Um, this series touches on things like the Tulsa massacre, right? Like things like slave uprisings, all of that is here. And you get the real world context in these bitter root or bitter truths essays. And, and even if you don't read these, right? Like this just all reminds me of my time in school because I was an African-American studies major. I read academic writings like this all the time. And I think that I've never seen this in a comic book before or since. So you've got so much to chew on. Um, and these were kind of stuffed at the back of every issue of Bitterroot um, if you read it in singles. But even if you didn't, now it's in this hardcover. You can skip past them if you want to. I think they add so much more to like your understanding of the context surrounding the story. Because while this is certainly a monster hunting book, it's certainly a work of fiction. So much of it is rooted in real life. I mean, this book opens up with a shot of Ruby D and Ossie Davis. Like, again, if you know, you know, and if you are uninitiated, it's okay. Like, because the book on its own is great, even without all of those extras. But man, when when it's hitting, it's hitting. Uh, so anyway, we are coming toward the back of the book, and I don't want to spoil anything for you, but just look at this art. I hope you've been seeing this art has not taken a step down in any of the pages. Uh, and man, I am so excited about this. Now, since they wrapped this series with issue 15, this is the cover of issue 14. But uh, since they wrapped this series with issue 15, they did uh, announce at Heroes Con last year that they're going to be revisiting the Bitter Roots. Um, you know, the Sangier, fam Sangier family, excuse me, will return in a brand new series called Bitter Root 1965. I haven't gotten any word on a release date for that yet. I imagine we'll get more information, uh, you know, sometime in the next couple of months. Very excited to see the return of this, but man, man, so much, so much is here. Like there's lost family members, there's family dynamics that you didn't see before. This looks like that dude, um, Sterling Brown, that's his name, Sterling Brown, who was at the beginning of Black Panther. Uh, but anyway, there's so many elements of this book. Like you'll fall in love with different members of this family. The grandmother specifically, I love, but I also love the character Blink, who just wants to be one of the guys. That's, she doesn't want to be a guy, but she wants to be a fighter for sure. Um, but man, there's so much, so much that I love about this book. Look at that. That's W.E.B. Du Bois' head. Like what? Just great stuff. Great references to African-American literature, academic writings, fiction. Like this just... This is this is if you are looking for a book to celebrate Black History Month, even though Black History Month has passed, read this. And this is a cover by Dennis Cowan, by the way. Um, this is this is about as good as it gets, right? Look at the, the Akira variant. So many variant covers, so many extras. Man, this is one of those books that like I didn't know was a thing as it was coming out, and I kind of learned about it a lot later. And I wish I had learned about it before. Uh, it's in production to be a film. Um, I think Regina King is signed on to be a producer on the film um, of Boondocks fame. And man, man, there's just so much that is great. And I mean, absolutely great about this book. There's a reason it won the Best Continuing Series Eisner Award twice. Twice it did. Anyway, that's the book. 
You can grab it at organicpricebooks.com. I've already been talking way too long. So I'll see you in another overview real soon. Until then, peace.